Hey there. So today we're going to take a look at baselines. And if you're not familiar with the baseline is, it is basically a snapshot of the current state of your project. So basically the, what the baseline can be used for is as you are managing and tracking your project progress, you can compare the baseline, which is what we said where our project was going to perform at, to your actual metrics. For instance, your cost to determine if your project is on budget or your work to determine if your project is taking more work than it should. When it comes to the, the uh, baselines, there are actually a number of different fields that are gonna be saved as part of this baseline process. You have uh, task fields, you have task duration, work cost, as well as start and finish. And you also have resource uh, fields that are saved too, and of course, summary level fields uh, that are gonna be saved. Now, uh, you can save the baseline in a couple different places. You can actually save the baseline in Project Online when you're web editing, and you can save the baseline in the client as well. You do, however, have uh, many more capabilities in the client as far as saving that baseline, and, and we'll go over those in just a minute. Looking uh, at the screen now here, we're in the web, as you can see, and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my ZZZ baseline project here. I'm gonna click right on the name, and let's go ahead and navigate to my schedule. And once we get to the schedule, we're gonna go ahead and check this out into the web. Check it out in the browser. And uh, we're gonna look at saving a, a baseline here. First, what I'm gonna do here is with that divider bar over, and you can now see that my baseline fields are currently empty because we didn't save a baseline. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna save one. On the task ribbon, you'll notice in the editing section there's a set baseline button here. When I click on that, it will expose a couple options here. And you do have options to set, set, save a baseline, same thing. Uh, set a baseline, you'll notice you have, have a number of different uh, options here, baseline, with uh, nothing next to it, but we'll call that baseline zero, baseline zero through 10, which means I have the ability to save 11 different baselines. And then you have the ability to clear a baseline. You may want to clear a baseline if, um, you know, maybe for one reason or another, you save the baseline and then uh, the project was delayed. And therefore we're going to clear the baseline, okay? Uh, saving the baseline is very simple. Just select whichever baseline you want to save it in. Uh, when we save the first one, we typically start uh, in, in that one right there. And when we save it, notice that uh, your baseline start and finish dates are all of a sudden populated like so, right? And like I said, there are gonna be other values that are populated behind the scene, which you can't necessarily see, uh, but let's move over here. Uh, yeah, so we have the, the start and finish dates are, are gonna be saved here. And what I can do is if I want, I can save these values here uh, and publish a project and that will update all the information throughout the cloud. But I'm gonna just exit out of here and I'm not, going to save the project right now because uh, like I said before, I wanted to show you some of the capabilities of uh, saving baselines within project. And so I'm gonna open up Microsoft Project and I'm gonna open up my ZZ baseline project there. And there it is, my baseline project. I'll go ahead and open that there. And now we have it opened and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it out to make sure that we can make some changes to it. And let's go ahead and look at the functionality again. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my table here so that we can see baseline fields. So uh, from the view ribbon in the data section, you have the table button here. Uh, looks like we're, we're wrong here. Uh, it's gonna be the variance one. And um, with the variance one selected, we have baseline start and finish, and then we have the, the variance here. And the variance is basically gonna be the variance between, in the case of the start variance, it'll be the variance between the baseline start and start, right? So basically what this is gonna show me is if my project didn't start, you know, when we said it was gonna start on the kickoff, uh, there will be a variance there. And it will show the number of days that the project was delayed. And if a finished date you know, we didn't finish on time as according to the baseline, you'll see a, a variance there. All right, so let's go ahead and save this. Go to the project ribbon like so in the schedule section, set baseline. And then remember we have those two options set and clear. Um, but in this case, when I click on set, it'll bring up a dialog box. And we see we have a little bit more of an option here. Uh, so again, we have the set baseline like we did before. And then I have the drop down here, which allows me to select, like we said before, the zero through 10 and uh, I can select either one of here. Now, the, typically the thing I would do is recommend that I would save 
the first baseline in baseline zero, and then I would also uh, save it in one. Um, and then I would never ever change one. That would always be the baseline uh, as of the project kickoff. And then as maybe we get uh, approved scope changes and change requests and so forth, you know, I would uh, save subsequent baselines in two, three, four through 10, um, because we always wanna keep that original baseline to understand what that original project scope looked like. So let's go ahead and select baseline and save. And as you can see, there's baseline start, baseline finish. And like I said before, I do wanna save one in one as well. And we'll go ahead and click that. And you're not gonna see a change there because we don't have baseline start and finish one selected. However, what I could do to show you is we'll go ahead and find baseline and we'll look for baseline one start. And there it is right there. And we can see that baseline one start is populated as well. When I go back here to set baseline and select the drop down, now you can see that we have dates next to when baseline and baseline one were saved here. Okay, so the, all the information is looking good so far. What I'm gonna do in this case um, is we're gonna go to the view menu here and we're gonna switch tables and I'm gonna go to more tables. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna switch to a table that's gonna have more baseline values here. And you'll notice there's a baseline table find that table and click apply. And the thing that I want to point out here is summary tasks and so forth. So we can see aggregates, right? So now I can see baseline work and baseline cost aggregate, work and cost aggregate, okay? So in those different areas of the project. Um, so uh, let's assume for a minute that, um, yeah, we did, we did work on part of the project, right? So uh, we'll go here and we'll insert actual work in the project. And uh, let's assume we did, you know, maybe this took five hours instead. Maybe this took 10 hours instead. And um, you know, this took eight, eight, right? And that that's basically a milestone. Milestone's not gonna take any work, okay? Uh, looks like this is 40, we'll do 45. This is 25, 16. Maybe this one took a little less, eight, eight. And then maybe this one took nine. Um, and we'll do that one eight again, okay? So we have some variant, uh, some values in here. If I were to go back to my variance table here, I'm probably gonna see a little bit of a different here, right? So if you look, and we'll go ahead and expand the name field out just a little bit. Um, we see slight variances here for each one of these. And, and the reason we see those slight variances is because I put more work in so that so if we put slightly more than can be accomplished in a day, it's going to take a little bit longer than a day, um, right? So the variances will be 0 0.13 day more than one day, and when they're all added up over subsequent tasks, you can see that the delay there, right? Okay, here is one full day delay, and then again the the delays add, and then the the, the delays just just perpetuate throughout the rest of the project because. Um, all these tasks are related, right? You have your relationships, your dependencies between tasks. So of course the delay is gonna uh, show up all the way down to the rest of the project. The reason we're here, and let's go back to that original table, go back to baseline and click apply. Um, the reason we're doing this is because I wanted to demonstrate another piece of functionality here. Let's say for instance, um, you know, maybe we had to re-baseline part of the project for one reason because the additional work was approved uh, in a certain case, right? So I can select all these tasks through the summary and I can go ahead and go to my project ribbon, set baseline, baseline. And what I can do is, uh, you know, maybe we're gonna do this, put this in, we'll leave it in the default baseline. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do not the entire project, but I'm gonna do selected tasks the ones that I currently have selected. And what do I want to do? Another option here, do I want the uh, selected tasks information to aggregate to all summary tasks or just from the subtasks into the selected summary tasks that I have, right? So I have right here this, this only one row seven selected. Uh, if I want them to roll all the way up to the project level, up to scope and project, I could just select that checkbox. So when I click okay, I should see changes with regard to aggregates up here. So let's go ahead and click OK. It's just asking me now if I want to overwrite that, that baseline zero, which I do. And if you notice, right, so the baseline cost up here changed. So I'm going to do Control-Z, which is undo, 
and then we'll do Y so you can see them change back and forth. Right, so it goes from $65,000 cost to 658 cost. And that's because again, the cost from here, right? All this cost in here is being aggregated all the way up into here. And this particular uh, cost within the project as well, right? So remember I didn't um, change anything else here. So that's the option of doing uh, baselining that particular part of it. If I wanted to rebaseline the entire project, right, so let's say um, the scope was changed. And again, the reason I'm not uh, saving this baseline anywhere else at this point in time is because you know, theoretically the you know we haven't executed the project past a certain point. But if I wanted to just rebaseline the whole project within there, I could just leave it in baseline zero, do an entire project, and again and click OK, and all these variances should go away. Okay, so you can see everything changed here. And then I'm gonna to go to, uh, let's go back to view, go back to tables, go back to variance. We should see zero variances because we went ahead and rebaselined the entire project. All right, um, so let's go back to my baseline table. Click apply. Okay, all right, so that's the ability to do that. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to make some changes again. Let's say this took 50 hours. And I don't know, this took 50 hours again, right? So again, we, we can see that we're changing things in here. Um, but what I wanna do is just demonstrate, let's go ahead and rebaseline these two tasks. And they're just the one that are selected, go to the project ribbon, set baseline. And what I wanna do is do the selected tasks, but I don't, I don't wanna do any roll up in this case, all right? which means in this case, I shouldn't see any change get aggregated up to the top. So when I click OK, and it's going to go ahead and ask me if I want to make a change, and I change the baseline above, and notice 65A, no changes at all because we didn't select that we wanted it to roll up to a summary. When would you want to do this? Well, there might be extenuating circumstances where you don't want it to roll up into uh, the baseline of the entire project. Maybe it's a separate subcontract or something like that. But uh, again, just showing you the different options with a baseline uh, in this particular case. So that demonstrated how to save your initial baseline and um, how to save additional tasks, a so scope change into the baseline. Let's say for some reason um, you wanted to, there was a, a large scope change in the project that was approved and you want to raise rebaseline the entire project but you want to save this baseline because you don't want to ever lose track of of this particular baseline what we would do in that case is save an interim plan and to do that we would go ahead and to set baseline and in this case what we're going to say is well you know i want to save this baseline zero i don't ever want to lose it and what i would do is i would select this baseline right and again remember i'm calling baseline without a number after it's zero and what I want to do with that is uh, I would actually like to save that in two. Because remember, the very, very first baseline of the project I saved into one. I'm never going to overwrite that. Therefore, I'm going to save this first, you know, approved change of the project into two. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Don't see any changes, right? So that's the interim plan. And then the next step I would do is I would set baseline again. And then remember I said I'm saving the entire project. So here's here's a confirmation that I moved baseline into baseline two, right? And if we wanna go ahead and, and prove that, here's my baseline cost. If I type this in here and I go to baseline two cost, which is right there, right? So 65.8. Okay, now if I bring in baseline one cost, just to prove that, that we didn't accidentally get, get baseline one cost copied, right? Okay, so we copied baseline into baseline two, 65.850 cents, 65.850 cents, and baseline one is 65. Okay, so that's again, just proving that that particular scenario transpired. What we wanna do now is just rebase the uh, rebaseline the entire project. I'm gonna go ahead and select this, make sure it's default baseline, click okay. It's gonna ask to overwrite it. And again, we're gonna go ahead and let it change. And then it changes to 69,562. And again, why is that? Well, remember we, we updated these two tasks, right? We updated them to 50 hours. That changed the cost. The cost aggregated rolled up to the project because we allowed it to overwrite and rebase the entire project. 
So, um, hey, there you go. Hopefully this just gave you a little information about using baselines. Um, you know, again, the, the, really the power of the baseline is having a, a line in the sand as to here's what we said the cost was gonna be, here's what we said the work was gonna be, here are the start and finish dates that we all agreed to. And as we execute this project, you know, without having this baseline here, and not necessarily that you're gonna track, you know, these cost metrics very granularly or the actual work and so forth, but even for the purposes of having your dates, right? So again, going back to view, table, variance, even for the mere purposes of, of tracking when we said it was gonna start versus when it did start or finish. Uh, the variance view here, right? So here are the, the current start dates based on a fluctuating plan. I can even move the baseline dates over. Okay, so again, I re-baseline, so everything should match here, but it's really easy to see if there were any delays in when things started, and again, any delays uh, when things finished or when things are projected to finish in the project. Uh, so baselines can be a big, big help with your project. Thanks for watching.